I first found out about Troy Lawrence about three or four years ago in Facebook groups where he was promoting a book called Origins. He's ju he'd just written from a YEC perspective. So, you know, curious me, I had to go out and buy the book and uh, order it from Amazon.com. And when it came, I'm reading through the book. And as soon as I pointed out to Troy, they really hadn't found Noah's Ark in Turkey again and that the, the geological formation there really isn't. Um, a wooden vessel with a collapsed roof, he immediately blocked me. But anyway, here's what the book looks like. There's a web page where you can go and download these free audiobook clips, or it takes you to the YouTube channel where you can also uh, listen to them there for free. The audiobook recording on YouTube is just this image for 27 minutes, so I took the liberty of putting in some slides on Troy's side of the presentation here to make it more interesting. I also, I left in the music that he had originally used. Welcome to Creation Ministry. I'm your host, Dr. Troy Lawrence. The purpose of this show, Creation Ministry, is to remove stumbling blocks placed by mankind, the philosophies of mankind, that get us away from the Word of God. These philosophies are called science, but they're not really science. They're more based on opinions by evolutionary scientists. The whole purpose is to reveal actual true science that is in harmony with the Bible. Folks, you need to understand that the term science means to know. And when an opinion comes out, of though it's from a scientist, it's not a synonym to science. Science is not a synonym to the opinions of evolutionary scientists. I did do some editing to the original recording here. Um, the first probably almost 10 minutes after that little intro had nothing to do with transitional fossils. So we're going to skip forward to the part that does. One of the things that scientists will do to get us away from the Bible when they are preaching Darwinian evolution, this is macro evolution, they will use... Uh, transitional fossils. Now, a transitional fossil is something that does not exist in the fossil record. It's, but what the term is, is it's something that's moving away from one kind of creature and in becoming another type of creature altogether different, such as like um, from a dog to a crocodile or a crocodile uh, to a dog or a fish to a human or so you really are looking for a crocodile, maybe a squirrel root, a cat bird. <laughs> well, anyway, whatever it is you're looking for, you're not looking in the right place because we actually have thousands of transitional fossils. And what we're going to see in this video is here's quite a few that you skip right over and don't even look at. So we're going to go through some of the transitional fossils that are allegedly Exhibit A or Exhibit B in the quiver, in the record uh, that supports Darwinian evolution. And we'll expose them and explore whether they are science or whether they are opinions and worse, doctrines of demons. The Bible teaches in, in 1 Timothy chapter 4 that there will be seducing spirits, that mankind will turn away from the truth and will turn towards doctrines of demons. So let's go through the science. We can go back to uh, Ernst Henkel. He was a German scientist in the 1860s. Now, he was an atheist. So what happens is once someone rejects God, once someone rejects moral absolute, absolute morality of the Bible, then morality is relative. What, in other words, what it means is what I feel to be moral at the time is now moral. And so then I can bend the rules. I can fudge a little bit here or there because I believe in Darwinian evolution so much, molecules to man, that I can falsify some, some evidence because it's, it's what is to, uh, truth anyway. Of course, there's more theists than atheists who accept Darwin's theory. And the assumption that there's a correlation between atheism and, and someone falsifying documents is just absurd. So let's look at Ernst Haeckel. He was in the 1860s and he falsified embryological drawings 
of different species, and he made them uh, too similar. So he drew a fish, a salamander, a tortoise, uh, and so on, eight different uh, creatures in their embryological state, and he drew them almost identical. And this worked its way in the textbooks. Now, it's so damaging that it's even in the textbooks today. My daughter is in public schooling in, in the Austin area, and she has told me uh, that she saw Ernst Haeckel's um, embryological drawings. Haeckel's drawings are not in textbooks today, but similar drawings are because comparative embryology does support evolution. I'm not going to go any more into Haeckel's drawings because they aren't even transitional fossils, and that's what the whole focus is supposed to be All about. All right, so the next um, transitional fossil, uh, alleged transitional fossil that we're going to dis uh, discuss about is Java Man. Java Man was uh, uh, alleged, uh, discovered off uh, an island of Indonesia. And he was uh, discovered by evolutionist Eugene Du Bois. Now, what's so interesting about Eugene Du Bois is he was a pu pupil, a student of Ernst Haeckel, who falsified the embryological um, drawings. So, in other words, he had teaching. He had a preconceived notion. He didn't go to the island trying to uh, discover um, flowers or uh uh, fossils and then conclude based on what was already there. No, no, no. He went there with an already preconceived notion that he believes in macro evolution, molecules to man, and he set out to prove it. He believed Darwin's theory predicted that there would be human fossils found in these older layers, and he actually went out and found them. <clears throat> so that's what it was. Um, what was his intent? And that's what's missing. If um, in the theory of evolution, Darwinian evolution. They need to have transitional fossils because if there's no transitional fossils, and there are none, then the theory is, is lost. So what they've done is they say we need to have transitional fossils to give credence to the theory of macroevolution. And that's to connect the dots that we have evolved from small primates uh, and increased in size uh, to finally get to homo sapiens to humans. It's what we see in the evidence. If you take early hominin fossils and line them up in order of age with the later ones, we actually see smaller primates evolving into larger humans. He, uh, and this is what they found, and I put that in parentheses because they found a tooth, a skull cap, and a femur. But it wasn't Debose that, that found that. No, he wasn't at the dig site, according to Wikipedia and what's written down about him. He was off campus, off the dig site, in a headquarters, and the bones were brought to him from different strata levels and from different dig sites. And he, because he had preconceived notions of what he believed to be true, he put those together and perpetrated um, the notion of a transitional fossils. And then he would travel back and forth from the campsite. Um, when the information was coming out, he then concealed evidence to bolster his claim. In other words, there was other fossils that were found that were incongruous to what he was uh, talking about. For example, there were other bones that were also found at the dig site by workers, such as two skull caps. But he kept them away from public viewing and hidden because they were human. And that didn't fit his timeline. So you can't have – if humans evolved from primates uh, through a, a slow process, then you can't have humans, human fossil, in the same strata as uh, transitional primates, alleged transitional primates, I should say. So he stopped allowing others to examine his Java fossils, which meant it was his words alone and no objective analysis by opponents of his uh, view was allowed. DuBose argued that the specimen was the missing link and called it uh, erectus, such as Homo erectus, and that it was 700,000 uh, years ago. So you could see there's, there's no testing of this. Um, he just simply put his ideology, he stamped his label on um, the fossil and then um, went out teaching his, his, his theory. Now, folks – it's important to note that when you go to museums, you'll see full-scale replicas <clears throat> of Java Man. And, and, but it was based on just a small fragment of bone and a long bone. <clears throat> and that's what's, that's what's going on. 
Java man is part of Homo erectus. We have thousands of Homo erectus fossils from Africa, Europe, the Middle East, and Asia. We could easily reconstruct the entire species without the bones of Java man. And so what they don't tell you is they won't tell you the gender of the fossil. Can anyone and the reason say this Lucy? is important, they just put the skulls in cranial volume, and, and you'll see them at the Smithsonian Institute, small skulls to larger skulls to perpetrate the ruse that uh, the evolution of the, of the human homo sapien, human species, that we started small and gradually got bigger. Once again, the skulls are arranged by age, not by size. The fact that it goes from smaller to larger skulls, from older to more recent, supports the theory of evolution. Th that's not true, because the entire fossil record is of something that was once larger. This is where it gets really crazy. There are many instances where ancestral species are smaller than more recent ones. All fossils are of something that's larger. Bats. Um, dragonflies, T-Rex. T-Rex's ancestors were actually much, much smaller than he was. Uh, um, whatever creature you want to think of, they were all larger in the fossil record and have adapted through environmental changes and became smaller over time. Whales are another example. The ancestral species were much smaller than the whales we see today. It's only recently, because of advancements in modern medical science, that we are starting to prolong our life and increase in, in size. But that's the opposite of what you've been saying. We're just now getting larger? Folks, that's opposite of the entire fossil record that shows, that is illustrated. You can look. All creatures in the fossil record were larger and have adapted um, through environmental changes and became smaller. Except humans? Come on, folks. That's not reality. One last time, there are thousands of examples in the fossil record of smaller species giving rise to larger ones later on. All right, let's go to our, um, <clears throat> our next transitional fossil. This is a uh, Neanderthal. Now, this trips up a lot of people. Neanderthal was actually discovered in 1908 in France. Um, and he was perpetrated that he was a transitional fossil 60,000 years ago. But when it finally came to uh, discovery... Uh, he seems to be focusing on just a couple of Neanderthal skulls. It's like he doesn't know there's way more than this. It was exposed that this was not a transitional fossil at all. Neanderthal was not a transitional fossil. It was a person that had rickets that had severe deformities from arthritic changes, and uh, that had uh, an injury to its skull, which caused deformity. There have been Neanderthal skulls that show injuries, but that wouldn't cause deformities in other parts of their body. He's getting this information from chick tracks. Chick tracks and really old creationist literature cites a few examples from the 1800s when we really did have only a couple fossils and some poor uh, interpretations were made. Neanderthal is, is not accurate at all. Now let's go to Lucy. Lucy is something that, that tripped up many uh, uh, Christians, and, and I saw the, the effect uh, firsthand in people, how it got them away from the Bible, away from, from God. Lucy is about three feet and seven inches tall, and um, this was discovered uh, in 1974. And what's important about um, Lucy is that it was it was bone fragments. Now it represented 40 percent of a skeletal structure, but all of them were fragmented. Uh, so if if each of those bone structures were uh, complete, then it would be 40 percent of a of a bone structure. Uh, but the what's important. And let me just give you a quick takeaway from uh, from Lucy, uh, because let me just just uh, get you get you to uh, Lucy. Lucy's knee joint is uh, critical. It's not actually Lucy's knee. It was found a year before in older layers, and it is a member of her species, but not her herself. So, have you ever noticed that when a chimpanzee uh, walks or a gor a gorilla, they wobble from side to side? And this is important to know why they why do chimps and why do gorillas wobble and orangutans wobble side to side? It's because their knee joint, the genu volga, 
has a zero degree uh, angle to its knee joint. And <clears throat> that causes the wobble. Humans, um, conversely, we have a nine degree genu valgus, a nine degree bend in our knee that allows us to walk in a straight line without a wobble. Lucy, now this is critical to understand, and this is information that Dr. David Minton um, has exposed and discovered. Lucy um, has a 15 degree angle genu valgus to her knee joint. Lucy is not a transitional fossil. She has uh, locking mechanisms in her wrist humans do not have, um, and that's uh, creatures that have that walk on their, their wrist. Um, she has the curled fingers and locking mechanisms in her wrist because she was a tree-climbing, knuckle-walking creature, like, like a large gibbon. No, not like a gibbon at all. Her anatomy was probably closer to ours than that of a gibbon. As far as the angle of the knee goes, a lot of studies have been done on this, and one recent one I, I just found uh, puts the angle at uh, 10%, so within the range of modern humans even. Um, I don't know where Menton got his information, but um, the, uh, the knee is definitely considered bipedal. She was not a transitional fossil. Folks, it's, it's who reigns supreme in your heart? Do the... The philosophies of man that say the Bible is wrong and that we evolved molecules to man, does that paradigm, does that ideology stemming from atheists, potentially from doctrines of demons, does that reign supreme in your heart? Or does God's word reign supreme in your heart? Let's see how Troy's doing so far. He says Heckel's embryos are not transitional fossils. I'm going to have to agree with him there. In fact, they're not even fossils at all and didn't belong in the discussion. 2. Java man was not transitional and represented by just a few bones. Neanderthal man, just an old man with rickets and or arthritis. 4. Lucy was a knuckle-walking gibbon. He goes on to talk about Nebraska man. And in the book, he even mentions Piltdown Man. So what he does is he focuses on things from over 100 years ago that we don't teach anymore. And he completely ignores uh, transitional fossils for the time period that he's speaking about that we do teach about today. This chapter in Troy's book was a really weak effort and seemed to rely 100% on earlier creationist writing. Not only did he get Neanderthals all wrong, he completely ignored the best examples of transitional fossils. Folks, I contend that one of the myths today is macroevolution. The theory that we have evolved from molecules to man and that the Bible is wrong. And that unfortunately, Christians who say they love God, who don't know the science, who believe in the opinions of evolutionary scientists, then annul scripture and they undermine scripture and they say, okay, we accept microevolution, but God did. Okay, this is Troy's choice of music from the original outro, and I chose the slides.